hello everyone let's continue our discussion on power planning so before we enter into the step of power planning let me try to introduce you to a problem first so we we had seen this initial problem where where this particular circuitry was uh, was demanding current at the same time basically each and every element of this particular circuitry was demanding current and the decoupling capacitor was supposed to provide all the charge or, or all the current to any of the element present in this particular circuitry okay let's take this particular circuitry and keep it as a black box let's say that was a macro let's say this was a macro okay now the second problem statement is if this particular macro is being repeated multiple times on the chip then there will be current demand for each and uh, for the each and every element of this particular macro let's let's see what i just said okay for example that this was one of the macro or this one one of the block that we that for which the problem was solved using decoupling capacitor the problem of the current demand was solved using decoupling capacitor similarly we have this particular macro being repeated four times okay let's say this this is your complete chip and it has got these two four these four macros this macro being repeated multiple times and there is some logic which is present at the at the boundaries also okay now also assume that this is the driver this is the load and there is a signal that is being sent from driver to load and the signal is basically logic 0 to logic 1 okay so what in in this scenario what we have to do is we, we have to make sure that this particular complete line maintains the same signal so that the load receives the same shape of the signal this is what we have to make sure okay now let's see where the problem lies so now let's let try to connect all of them to the power supplies something like this you have this particular power supply you have vdd you have vss the vdd lines goes over here it goes over here and this blocks has been tapped to the vdd this blocks has been tapped to vdd okay and similarly you have the power you have the ground line which goes here which goes here and the and all the block ground lines are tapped to ground okay we see all of them uh, we see we see them in the four in all for all the four blocks now assume that this particular line the, so assume that this particular line is a 16 bit bus okay and before that when we say that this particular line has been charged from logic 0 to logic 1 basically driver is sending a signal from logic 0 to logic 1 so this complete signal this complete line has to retain this particular scenario so as the load should receive the same signal now for for this particular line to retain the same scenario it should get the necessary supply from the power because now in oh in this region we don't have any decoupling capacitor that will take care and that will take care of this particular scenario so since we don't have any decoupling capacitor in this in this area the power supply is the is the one who has to supply power to this complete line and also it's not very feasible to put decoupling capacitor on all over the chip so some sections some critical blocks are being are being uh, decoupled from the main supply using decoupling capacitor but not for each and every element we can't do that it's not feasible okay so over here if you see this particular line has to be taken care by this power supply and now this power supply is sitting a bit at, at a far distance from this particular line so there is always a possibility of voltage drop so what you see vdd over here that might not be vdd on this line but it might be something something else let's try to see how let's try to see what will be the value of this particular what can be the value of the vdd and the ground at this particular point okay so let's assume that this is a 16 bit bus and let's try to take the initial conditions of 16 bit bus so let's say this is a 16 bit bus this is this was the blue line that we talked about and when and this is the initial state of the 16 bit bus so when we say the logic the, the, uh, the each and every line is logic 1 or logic 0 this is what we mean so when we say one particular line of the 16 bit bus is at logic 1 it says that that's a capacitor which is being charged to vdd again there is a capacitor which is charged to vdd similarly for this line whenever we we see 111 these all three capacitors are charged to vdd wherever we see 00 these capacitors are discharged to ground they are already discharged to ground now let's take a scenario where the 16 bit bus we just saw the 16 bit bus where this particular 16 bit bus is connected to an inverter let's say somewhere let's say this particular inverter it's let's say it is connected to an inverter okay now what will happen this when you when you pass this particular logic to the inverter the output of the inverter will be an inverted value of the input what does that mean all the capacitor which was charged to logic 1 they will all get discharged to logic 0 at the same time and the, and this particular capacitor which will all discharge to 0 will now all charge to logic 1 in that scenario what can go wrong let's see that 
so for example let's say we will be uh, will be taking a scenario well all the logic ones all the v's are switching from logic 1 to logic 0 basically all the capacitances will discharge are, are discharged from logic 1 to logic 0 and now since all of them happen at the same same time and we have a single ground line for the complete 16 bit bus so since all of the capacitor will now discharge their charges at the same time you see the ground which was supposed to be logic 0 there is a bump over here and that's what basically is called as ground bounce and if the size of this bump exceeds the noise margin level it might enter into an undefined state as we discussed in the previous lectures and due to the undefined state it can either go to logic 1 or logic 0 so things becomes a bit, a bit unpredictable over here okay and since all of the capacitances which was charged to v, charged to VDD are now discharging to ground at the same time basically it's basically saying that this is one line and there are different taps and all of the taps all of the water taps are being opened at the same time so uh, during some point of time at some point of time you see that the water level at some at some area just increases and this is this particular that so water level is supposed to stay at this level but due to the taps opened at the same time there is an increase in the water level for some time and then it will settle down but that's a different different story okay this is this is basically this phenomenon is called as ground bounce and let's see what happens when you try to when when all these particular capacitances try to charge from logic 0 to logic 1 in that case all these particular capacitances are demanding for supply from the main power supply at the same time and since you have only single line for all these capacitances you see there is a voltage group because all of them are demanding current at the same time it's basically it's basically uh, 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 there, there are multiple there are multiple let's say there are multiple buckets and a single tap so single tap has to supply water to all the buckets but it is it is it has got not enough supply to uh, to, uh, to provide the buckets and that's why you see a voltage group that's why you see a shortage of water okay and this voltage group as long as it is within the noise margin level we are good we are good enough but if it goes into an undefined region we are we are the things becomes a bit unpredictable so the phenomena that we saw was causing a lowering of the supply voltage either I, the vdd which the vdd which was supposed to be vdd on these lines now goes some somewhere less than vdd and the vss which was supposed to be zero volts over here it's somewhat at a higher voltage okay so that's the problem that we see and if you see the problems that we just discussed those are coming due to one reason the problem is the supply is being provided only from one point if there had been multiple supplies let's say there was a power supply over here there was a power supply somewhere over here if there were power supplies all over the places then this problem would not have been happened because now each and every each and every line will look into its nearest power supply and get the supply from it okay and that's exactly the solution for this particular problem let's see how so let's say if you in this cases what is happening the power is coming from single the single source okay it's coming only from one place instead if the power had come from multiple places that would have solved this problem for example something like this instead of a single power supply which we saw in the previous videos we'll have multiple power supplies we have vdd vss vdd vss lines okay you see we have multiple vdd vss lines and now each of them let's say if, if this particular block demands a, uh, uh, this has been taken care by the decoupling capacitor if some logic which is sitting over here demands a current it will take the current from the nearest power supply or it will drop its current to the nearest ground so it did not wait from a power supply which was sitting over here but it can tap the it, it can tap the power from the its nearest power supply so this is the reason that you see in the in, in the recent uh, chips there are multiple power supplies there are multiple vdds and vss ports there are multiple pins for vdd and vss ports okay this is this is the exactly the reason for that and similarly let's say there was some there was the line which was sitting from this th there was a line which was going from this point to this point the, this particular line will take its current from the nearest power supply even the 16 bit bus will take the current or ta take the charge from the nearest power supply or dump its charge in the nearest ground line so this this is the logic this is basically called as the mesh and this is what exactly is the solution for our power this is exactly the plan for our power so this particular power planning what we will take will take one vss line let's say this represents vss this represents vdd so this will be all your vdds placed in this fashion and there will be again one more vdds placed in the in, in a different direction and they will be all connected okay similarly we'll be doing the similar thing for ground as well so you have these ground lines you have the, the horizontal and vertical ground lines and they are all tapped now any logic which is sitting over here will take its current from the nearest power supply or will dump its current to the nearest ground 
so this is basically the power planning of what we do and in the recent VLSI chips you might be seeing there are power measures there are lots of power measures and this is the reason for that okay so we have discussed all, discussed all of them in a separate section called as crosstalk videos you might want to have a look into those videos and what we'll do is since I'm already running out of time will the next step is basically pin placement it's a very simple step so once we do the pin placement and the logical cell placement blockage we are ready with our floor plan okay so let's try to look into these two steps in the next video thank you